Hello and welcome to We Do Disney. My name's Doug. I'm Emmy. And today we're going to be talking about the top five things to do on a non-park day. Two and one. Number five, a spa day. It's awesome to schedule some time for a little rest and relaxation, especially on a Disney vacation. Some people forget to add this into their vacation time. I personally think it's a must do to go to a spa or relax by the pool and unwind and recharge. Now a spa day is one of our favorite things to do as a couple. They have lots of couples massages and other treatments at all sorts of different locations around Walt Disney World property. There are three main spas that you can visit. The Senses Spa at Disney's Grand Floridian, the Senses Spa at Disney's Saratoga Springs, and also you can head over to the Swan and Dolphin Resort and they have Mandara Spa. Now, all of these spas have tons of different services that you can choose from. They'll help you over the phone to schedule your reservation if you'd like to book something. If you're checking out the prices, we'll put a link in the description below so that you can take a look at these spas and their pricing. And if you don't want to go to one of those three full service spas, you can just grab a quick massage over at one of the five satellite locations at various resorts on Walt Disney World property as well. Another thing that I think we should add is if you are looking for couple time where you're, you know, spending a little bit more time together, the Grand Floridian Spa Senses has most of their rooms totally separate by gender. So if we were to book a couple's massage, the Grand Floridian, being true to the 1900s theme that they are trying to portray, has separate relaxation rooms for men and women, and that means the only time that we're going to spend together is actually during the service. So during our couple's massage, we're together. The rest of the time, it's totally separate. At Mandara, as well as Senses over at Saratoga Springs, the relaxation areas are mixed so you can spend time with your significant other. Now budgeting for a spa day, you might think it could be hundreds and hundreds of dollars for all these services. Well, it depends. It depends on the package you'd like to build with your spa and what you prefer to do on your vacation. But if you just want to enjoy the relaxation that a spa has to offer, you can purchase a $25 day pass. This allows you access to the jacuzzis and hot tubs and relaxation rooms to just unwind and put your mind at ease. Our number four activity for a non-park day is going to be mini golf. Now here on Walt Disney World property, there are two different locations for you to play mini golf. One is going to be Winter Summerland and the other is going to be Fantasia Gardens. Now at each of these locations, there are two courses each. Here at Walt Disney World, mini golf is special, obviously. Mickey, Minnie, and the whole crew are involved, and it's a ton of fun. For me, I grew up going to these mini golf courses, and I don't think any Walt Disney World vacation trip for me is going to be complete without one. Which is funny, because after talking to you about all this, I realize I've never been to Winter Summerland or Fantasia Gardens. You've never mini golfed at Walt Disney World? No. Nope. We're going now. Really? We're going now. Let's go. Get your stuff. <laughs> Okay. We're going now. We'll be back. We're going mini golfing. <laughs> what? I'm so excited! I can't believe you've never done this before. Sorry. I guess I was just too busy meeting princesses. Princesses play mini golf. So where do you want to go? Winter Summerland. Gotta hang out with Santa. Go. Here at Winter Summerland Mini Golf, we have two 18 hole miniature golf courses for your enjoyment. You're gonna be hanging out with Santa and his elves either way, whether it's through a winter wonderland or in the summer heat after the snow has melted away. This is located right outside of Blizzard Beach. So come along with us. We're gonna give you a little glimpse into what it's like here at the Winter Summerland Mini Golf Course.
fun, right? Yeah, that was awesome. Ugh. Except for the part where I didn't know that the snowman was going to squirt water at me, but you know. Squirty the snowman. Always a good time. <laughs> so, few things to know about mini golf. One, if you're going to be going sometime around dusk, the Winter Summerland course is close to a body water and the water park, and there can be mosquitoes. So bring some bug spray along, or bug spray is available for purchase at the front desk. Two, the other course that we didn't visit, Fantasia Gardens, has two courses that I want to give a little bit of information on. Course number one, the easy course. This is the one that has all sorts of cartoon elements from the movie Fantasia. It is probably your better choice if you're going to be going as a family, but if you are on the mini golf PGA tour, you could consider doing the hard course. Now this course has sand traps, water elements, and is formed a whole lot more like a normal golf course. Great if you're up for the challenge, but it doesn't have the fun elements that the other side of Fantasia Golf has. Either way, it's a great afternoon or evening to spend with your whole family and is fantastic for a non-park day. Our number three activity to do on a non-Disney park day is to go and visit Disney Springs. Now I'm often surprised that families don't schedule time to go and visit this place. Most people associate it with just shopping and dining, which there's plenty of that, but there's also a lot of entertainment there and fun experiences for you to partake in. Pretty much for any age as well. You can go ahead over to the Bippity Boppity Boutique if they have experiences for ages 3 to 12 where you can become a princess or a knight for the day. And you can also set up a reservation for this by calling the uh, reservation line that Walt Disney World provides and set it up that way. They also have an experience for ages 10 and up called The Void. Especially if you're into Star Wars, this is a must do. It is so much fun. If you head on to thevoid.com, you can set up your reservation this way and you can go up to four guests at a time. So if you have a larger party, you may need to break it up into two or more reservations. Now this experience is a virtual reality tour through a Star Wars mission. You are a stormtrooper and you are trying to solve this mission and get through this virtual reality experience. If you're not into Star Wars or maybe you're a little motion sick, you might want to skip this part. But Disney Springs also has some other fun entertainment such as statue artists and some singers and dancers at Rackland Road. Piano guy. Oh, and the piano guy. This is rolling piano guy and or girl, <laughs> it depends on the night. And the, it's so much fun to see all of these wonderful entertainers as well. If you're looking for a more adult, relaxed experience and maybe grab a cocktail or two, there are bars located at every restaurant pretty much at Disney Springs. And if you want exclusively some adult time, you can head over to the Edison. At 10 o'clock p.m. they turn into a 21 plus older bar where you can grab a cocktail and enjoy kid free. Our number two experience for non-park day is hanging out at your resort. Now hear me out. I'm not just talking about sitting by the pool, soaking in some vitamin D, and letting the kids splash around. Although that's always great, there are other things that you can do at your resort that can be really unique. Few that we've seen at most resorts are trivia games and little activities for the kids to participate in right around the pool. These are often led by a cast member and you can participate as a family or as individuals and it's a ton of fun. Others, if you're more into something low-key, there are craft activities at most resorts. This can include tie-dyeing, we've seen painting of porcelain tiles, things that you can come to create and bring home with you as a keepsake from your stay. Now, each resort is unique at Walt Disney World, and this leads to other unique experiences. For dining, there is a luau at the Polynesian, or at Fort Wilderness, the Hoopty Doo Musical Review. Both are incredibly entertaining dining experiences and things that you really shouldn't miss. Also, other free activities would be the jazz band at the Grand Floridian. There's also a torch lighting ceremony at the Polynesian. 
And if you feel like it, there's even night vision goggles that you can use at the Animal Kingdom Lodge to look out onto the savanna and check out what the animals are doing in the dead of night. Oftentimes they're more active because it's finally cool enough to want to do something. These are all special experiences at your resort that do not require a day at the parks. And that's why that was our number two experience for your non-Disney park day. Our number one activity to do on a non-park day at Disney is to go and enjoy the Magic Kingdom fireworks at the California Grill, which is located at the Contemporary Resort. Now this is a really great way to still get park magic without having to go into the parks. What you can do is head over to the Contemporary Resort and go up to California Grill and enjoy the fireworks either inside the restaurant or outside on the balcony. What they do is they pump in the music from the show so that you can hear what's going on, but you can see the fireworks from a very different perspective. And this vantage point is really awesome to watch and it's very unique. Now, you don't need a reservation to be able to go up to the California Grill and watch the fireworks. Now, if you did have dinner earlier on in the day, or if you had a special activity plan like brunch at the top, which is Sunday brunch at the Contemporary, highly recommended, then you will only have to bring your receipt and say, hey, I had a dining experience here earlier in the day, I'd love to see the fireworks and they'll send you on up. Now, if you don't have a dining reservation, that's okay too. If there is space, they will also let you up into the bar and lounge area where you can order off the full menu or have a variety of cocktails. And then when it comes for time for the show, you can head out onto either the balconies or you can stay right where you are to enjoy the experience. Any way you do it, it's something that is a really special and unique way to remember those fireworks and is a great way to spend a non-Disney Park evening at Walt Disney World. So thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed our top five activities to try out on a non-park day at Disney. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That's subscribing. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye guys. Bye. So then, <laughs> princesses play mini golf. My hat disappeared. <laughs> 18 holes of golf times two. two activities mini golf related here. I'm sorry. You're also screaming. What happened? <laughs>